I'd like to bring you up to date on the school finance litigation in Texas. After 12 weeks of testimony, Judge Dietz ruled from the bench that the system that the state uses to fund schools in Texas is unconstitutional. And he found it unconstitutional based on a number of different issues. In addition to being inefficient, he found the system to be inadequate, inequitable, and a statewide property tax. He found the system to be inadequate because districts do not have the funds necessary to meet the state expectations. He found the system to be inequitable because districts have different amounts of revenue per pupil to spend. He also found the system to be a statewide property tax because districts have very little meaningful discretion in setting their tax rates. As a reminder, Richardson ISD participated in the school finance litigation. We were a named plaintiff. We provided testimony at the state level. We were very pleased with Judge Dietz's decision. We don't anticipate any major changes in school funding formulas this legislative session because we know that this decision will be appealed and we will not have a final decision from the appeal until well after the legislative session ends. I'd also like to bring you an update on the 83rd legislative session. We are tracking a number of bills that will have a direct impact on public ed. And I would like to talk briefly about bills that will impact funding, accountability and assessment, as well as graduation plans. In the area of funding, we have appropriations bills from both the House and the Senate that provide for additional money for new students. However, the funding that is proposed under both bills will provide less funding per student than we received prior to the last biennium. In the area of end of course exams, we have several bills which are specific to different provisions within this. We have some bills which reduce the number of end of course exams. We have some bills which eliminate the 15% requirement or either make it a local district option. And then we have some bills which alter the cumulative score requirement. In the area of graduation plans, we have several bills which address these. We have some which eliminate the minimum plan, the recommended plan, and the distinguished plan and replace those with a foundation plan with endorsements or specializations within different areas and they also provide for great flexibility for substitution with career and tech courses. In addition to these bills, we are also monitoring bills which address school choice and vouchers because these bills also will have a direct impact on public education. I'd also like to bring you up to date on district planning processes for 2013-14 and I'm going to touch briefly on three areas, the first being enrollment growth, the second being bond and facilities, and the third being budget. In the area of enrollment and growth, we just recently completed a demographic update with Templeton and Associates, and I'd like to share some of the key findings with you. We have added over 3,000 students over the last three years, and our growth is primarily due to high yields from our apartment complexes and regeneration of our older neighborhoods. Our growth is projected to continue. We could see almost 5,500 new students over the next 10 years. This is exciting news for Richardson ISD. It means we are continuing to grow. Families are continuing to choose to be a part of Richardson ISD. The second area that I would like to address specific to our planning process is an update on our bond program. In May of 2011, our district was successful in passing a bond election for $170 million. And since then, every summer has been devoted to major projects. This summer, we move into phase three. We will be renovating Dartmouth Elementary, Moss Haven Elementary, Merriman Park Elementary. And in addition to the elementary campuses, we will be renovating the auditoriums at both Richardson High School and Lake Highlands High School. And we will also be renovating the natatorium at Pierce High School. In addition to the bond projects, we will be adding six classrooms to Forest Lane Academy to accommodate additional growth within that area and we will also be renovating the planetarium at Skyview for academic classrooms. We are extremely pleased with the progress we've made on our bond 2011 and we are looking forward to the progress that will be made this summer. I'd also like to bring you an update on our budget planning process. Plans are well underway in planning for the 2013-14 school year. We have two main priorities. The first priority will be to add teachers at both the elementary and secondary levels to accommodate for the additional students we've received over the past two years, as well as the students we anticipate receiving next year. Our second priority will be to increase salaries and benefits. And if you will, let me take you back in time to the last legislative session. The challenges were unprecedented. The state and the nation faced huge budget shortfalls. 
At the state level, the cut to public education was $5.4 billion. What did that mean for Richardson ISD? We also had funding cuts. Our shortfall last year was $14.2 million, and this year $21.7 million. Over the last two years, we froze salaries, we increased class sizes, we operated with almost 300 waivers last year, and even though we made those sacrifices, we did not cut staff, we did not cut programs, and we did not cut services. The outlook for this next year is much better. We have better news to share. As I shared earlier, I'm going to be making recommendations for additional teachers as well as increases in salaries and benefits. We're able to do this because we have access to additional revenue, partly because of student growth. I'm going to be posting more comprehensive information in RISD notes and School Times Now, so I would encourage you to check both of those sites for additional information. On behalf of Richardson ISD, I want to thank you for joining us in this month's update. I want to thank you for your support of our schools, our staff, and our students.